Hello, this is John again. I'm back. Anyhow, um, I was watching the, the video I did of part one of uh, this backdrop painting thing I'm doing. And I would like to apologize to all you ladies and gentlemen for all the ums. Ums. Uh, must be a real, must be a real um bug. But uh, anyhow, I will try to get through this next video without the ums. So the uh, first step is we want to get the green down. And here I cheated. I found a color that I liked. And I put it on some uh, cardboard. And I took it to Home Depot. And I had to make me up this little itty bitty thing. It's only a few dollars. And this is just latex, flat latex paint. And it uh, makes it a whole lot quicker to uh, get, this, get this on. You don't have to uh, mix up a whole bunch. So just use a regular paintbrush. And we want to go up close to our horizon line that we did earlier. Right here. You don't want to go up real, real far. There we go. Just go ahead and put her on. And put her on. Here again, you want it on fairly thick because we want to try to keep this paint wet for doing our our highlights on it. Um, when the paint's wet, it's a lot easier to blend the uh, next layer in. So we want it wet. Of course, we don't want it runny, though. But uh, try to get it on there as thick as you can without making it runny. I just thought of something in my country. I don't know if I'm allowed to say ladies and gentlemen anymore. Maybe I'm uh, supposed to say gender neutralities. <laughs> our whole gender neutral thing we got going on here. Everybody's making fun of our prime minister. I, personally, I think a man is still a man and a lady is still a lady, but who am I? I'm just, I'm just a guy who likes model railroads. But anyhow, here's, uh, you see the little hill I got going here? I'm going to curve my brush up and follow it. And right there a little bit up, right there a little bit up. And just kind of let the uh, brush... Follow the contour of your terrain, and uh, the brush strokes in it will uh, kind of make it look uh, like a hill or a valley. There we go. Now, that is that paint. Now, I have a really nice uh, soft brush here that I'm going to use for this next step. Um, I don't know what this is called. It's some sort of synthetic hair. And this is just a little brush. And I got it at, at Home Hardware. Uh, I'm not sure whether Home Depot has something like this or not, or whether you'd have to go to an art store. But, but you see the bristles are really soft. Um, that makes it really nice for blending. Things just feather in really, really easily. So, and I went ahead already and mixed up a little darker green. For my low areas. So we got a low area right here, so a little darker green, you can just blend her in. Kind of makes 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 the uh, low area stand out just a little bit. Right there we just jam blend her in. Let's just blend that nicely. A uh, really, a really light brush stroke, right? Maybe even sometimes a little twirling action will, will uh, get her blended in for you. There we go. That's looking better. Really lightly does it. There we go. Now there's another little low area right over here. We'll put some in right here, just kind of, you know, in the natural world out there, 
the low ground has shadows and the high ground has has highlights so we just try to duplicate this on our on our backdrop that when you take a picture of your train going by at a later date it looks like it's traveling through the countryside the day I get my railroad uh, to a point where I take a picture of a train and uh, you can't tell whether it's a real train or whether it's a model railroad and I will feel I'll I'll have succeeded in what I'm trying to do there we go now we just blend her in nicely got nice nice little depression area going there there we go right, let's just go ahead and take this one over here just kind of it helps to step back sometimes while you're doing this just step back and take a look at it and say how am I doing right now while it's wet it's a good time to get this done um, you can get her done also when it's uh, when the back background is dry but you have to to get it to blend in real nice you have to wet it down just a little bit <coughs> here we go now let me clean my brush want to get that black off of it because now we're going to now we're going to do uh, some highlights and for the highlights I've got just straight yellow out of the tube straight white out of the tube and yellow um, it uh, it's not a really strong color but so it'll go on and uh, you can just go ahead and just make some highlights here and there There we go, there's some there. Just a little bit here. Just like that. Just kind of give yourself some highlights. Now, let's go over to the hill. That's where the we're going up the hill. We just take and curl it just like that a little bit. Kind of follow the contour of the hill. Blender, just like that. There we go. Let's get a little bit more in right here. Just to kind of make that hill pop a little bit. The uh, two, uh, you'll notice in nature as you look out, farther away tends to look a little lighter and a little hazier than every, everything up close does. Up close everything's more clearly defined for sure. So we're on the top part of the backdrop here we're putting a few more highlights because that's the way it will look in nature. There we go. Now we're going to do just a little bit of white with the same brush. Don't even bother cleaning it. But when you're doing the white, you want to put very little on. White is also a strong color. See that? Just a little there. Let's go ahead and... and I could have got away with actually putting just a hair less on there. Yep, I sure could have. So, because... I went a little too strong right there. We're going to take our uh, our green paint again, and we'll put just a little bit of that with it, just to kind of just to ease her up just a little bit. There we go. That's better. Yeah, white sure is one of those strong ones. There we go. There we go. Now, I think what I might do is just leave some of that green right on my brush. It'll kind of, it'll kind of help blend it in just a little bit. I 
There we go. Still got too strong. So we'll put a little more green on top of this again. Just to, just so it's not stark. We we want we want the we want it there, but we don't want it stark. There we go. There, I'm happy with that. Now, let's just move over here a little bit. We'll get this last little bit here. So, what I'm going to do, get my little smaller brush. Just going to grab a little smaller brush here so I don't put on quite as much at one time. There we go. Now, we'll see if I can feather that in. Oh yeah, that's better. Now we are going to put a row of trees and bushes and stuff along here, so if there's a few imperfections, that'll help. That'll help hide it somewhat. There we go. Okay, that there is being a little stubborn. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush, dab it in the water a little bit, pat it down. That'll help. There you go. That'll help spread it out a little more evenly. The background has already got fairly dry on me there. Now, if you wanted to, you could also put uh, retarder in that paint. It would it would help you a little bit with the with the dry time. It acts more like an oil paint if you put a little retarder in it. But uh, I think that'll work. By the time we get our trees and stuff on there too, that'll that'll be just fine. There we go. Okay. Well, we have gotten that far. Alrighty, now it's time to put some trees on here. And we're going to do our kind of like mid-range trees and bushes here. Um, if you do them tiny, it really pushes the background back. You don't want to do these ones too big. Um, so my favorite way of doing these is I use a, uh, a filbert brush. This is a number eight. This one's got the stiff bristles on it. Um, it works really good. So let's say we're going to do a little hardwood tree. Just, just kind of round them out. Just dab them in there. There we go. There's a nice little hardwood tree. We'll do another one right here on the other side of this gully. There we go. Now, let's put a nice little line of bushes going across. And this is going downhill. So, there we go. The other side, we'll put another nice little line of bushes. We'll take him right in front of that hardwood tree. There you are. Put another little line of bushes right there. There. All those things there, just, uh, they kind of push things back. All right, now we'll just go on the other side of that gully. You'll have to excuse my videography here. <laughs> I'm kind of doing this in a block of wood on my, on my cell phone, so there you have it. Now, if you want to do a, a cedar tree, which, of course, we have tons here in eastern Ontario, just start like this. And then just kind of dab 
like that just to let the uh this is where the stiff bristles are are so good they they uh hold their shape so you can get this branch structure out there's a little cedar tree now let's do another little one right here maybe we'll make this one just a little smaller there we go now go over here we'll make another one and uh it's that same uh dark green color that i kind of used for uh doing the gullies there we are let's put a little tiny one right here just kind of give her a little more there we are yeah all right now let's put a nice hardwood tree of some kind right here there we go another one right here apparently I I don't know um, this is not my personal observations but I have been told that the rule of nature is is trees end up in odd numbers rather it be one three five seven you don't ever see or hardly ever see just two trees together um, I've tried to pay attention to this so I'm not going to dispute it but there we are so this is our second layer of trees coming along pretty good I think we'll put just uh, a couple more bushes right here. We just we don't want to block that hole back in, but uh, we want to keep the view kind of going through a little bit. But at the same time, we want to be able to uh, put the distance there. That that there it just opened up a whole open area in behind. I'm looking for my soft brush. There it is. Need my soft brush now. And just kind of flatten up the bottom of these. Now this is also a good time to determine where your shadows are going to be. Um, uh, most, of, most of you will probably have uh, layout lights. And your layout lighting is uh, either going to come from this side over here or, or it's going to come from this side over here or in front. So whatever you're deciding uh, is where you need to put your shadows on your trees. And that's pretty easy to do. So but... Anyhow, this wraps this one up. Um, I guess I will do the close-up foreground trees next and maybe some rocks. So until then, have a good one. Bye.